So Cincinnati 28, Tulsa 20. Whoo, brother. Tulsa outgained Cincinnati 446 to 390. Uh, they ran 26 more plays. They won time of possession. They won turnovers 3 to 1. They it, Tulsa did not convert any points off of any of the three turnovers. Uh, shout out to Shamari Brooks for Tulsa. 25 carries, 132 yards against that defense with one touchdown. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I can get down with that. Desmond Ritter has not really looked good in like three weeks. Like he's been okay, but he has certainly not been what he was at the beginning of the season. Jerome Ford. Like I I don't know what happened here, but he he had one touchdown, but only had seven carries for twenty four yards. He got hurt. You didn't watch the game? I didn't no, I didn't see him get hurt. Like I I just saw he went, that he, he wasn't went, in there after a no, little he while. went out he went out early. No, that's this is what happened. Is this is this is why when I've got four games on at the same they're time, all, they're like, all world running back comes out of the game that completely changes their offense. That completely changes everything that they try to do, and to be able to fight like hell without your second best player on the team out like that that's a that's a big win. I think that's a big win. Defense stepped up when they had to because they knew the offense was struggling. Yeah, no, and they, and you they lose definitely the second most up. important player on the team. That's a big deal. You lose him early, you got to fight like hell to stay in this game. Alec Pierce uh, showed out receiving wise for Cincinnati. Uh, Desmond Ritter had 274 yards passing, 113 of them were to Pierce uh, on five catches. He had one touchdown, the long of 40. He was awesome. Like this team is is finding ways to win, and that is incredibly important because, like uh, like one of these commenters had to say, Nate, it's hard to go undefeated against any circumstances. Period. Like it is very easy to play down to the level of competition, especially when you were expecting to win. So, I you know, Modest Cowboy jumped in and said, "Shout out to Tulsa. They played Oklahoma State tough. They played Ohio State relatively tough, and now they played Cincinnati. They have had a very tough schedule this year." Yeah, the the issue is, like, again, consistency, volatility, etc. This Tulsa team lost to a not-good Navy team, and Navy didn't throw a pass last week. And then you're in a game at Cincinnati where game day shows up, where Cincy is supposed to be pissed off because of how low they were ranked in the CFP rankings. I, You know, you you expect more from Cincinnati. Yes, what Chris was talking about with Ford kind of changes the game, but all in all, and Cincinnati went up 14 to nothing. Early, right? But then Tulsa comes yes. right back, makes this a 14-12 to 12 game at the half. Like, and then, you know, since he jumped back out 28-12, but then they give up points again, and it becomes a game, and then they are in a, a fight for their lives at the end of the ballgame. And I don't look down on this as much as, as I'm just confused. Like, I, I just, I, I'm curious what the, what the next step is, Right. I don't know, Chris. Give me give me some more thoughts here on on Cincy. Well, I mean, I, I just I don't know how how serious the injury is with Ford. If he's out for a long period of time, it's going to be a problem for their offense, and and that's just because it's such a big part of their offense. That would be like he's not as good as this person, but that would that would be like taking Walker the third off of Michigan State. Like, yeah, you you just can't take your most dynamic weapon away. And think you you're not going to be able to make adjustments when it happens in the middle of a game. There are no adjustments to just be able to fix that quickly. Okay, so the offensive game plan stays as it is. You're using other guys that don't necessarily do what he does to try to 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 build another player like him on the field on the fly. I think this coming week they'll look better than they did this week if Ford doesn't play because they'll have a week of practice and they'll have a week of game planning and and they'll be able to to you know put guys in better situations that they're more suited for. Devise a scheme without him. Like But I but I yeah, but but losing him in the middle of a game, that's a hard fault game. You just want to get out of there with a win. I don't like I said, we we look down at Cincinnati for doing it, but no one looks down at Ohio State. No one looks down at Alabama. Everyone wants to continue to make excuses for those teams, but they want to crush this team and say, look, see, they're not very good. They almost lost to Tulsa. Yeah, well, Ohio State was in a dogfight with Nebraska, and they suck cock. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.